We've got some exclusive news for you concerning the Canadian government's ongoing review of this country's sale of weapons to Saudi Arabia. That review was announced back in 2018 following the brutal killing of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Canada has a $15 billion deal with the kingdom to export light armored vehicles. CBC has learned that officials at Global Affairs Canada have given the green light to existing and new arms export permits to Saudi Arabia. The revelation comes in this briefing note prepared by the Deputy Ministers of International Trade and Foreign Affairs and sent to then Foreign Affairs Minister Christian Freeland. The document, dated September 17, 2019 states that in its review, quote, officials found no credible evidence linking Canadian exports of military equipment or other controlled items to any human rights or humanitarian law violations committed by the Saudi government. Officials did not identify any existing permits or pending applications that would be of concern under the standard robust risk assessment framework. That means that they found no issues with the Canadian-made light armored vehicles this country is exporting to Saudi Arabia. The document also says that during this period of review, the department has assessed and processed a further 48 permit applications for exports of controlled goods to KSA, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, on a case-by-case basis, and that, quote, those permits have been deemed ready for approval by officials and await your further consideration. It's important to note that this document doesn't mean that the Canadian government will ultimately continue with the lab exports or with new export permits, but it does give the green light to sell arms to Saudi Arabia. The decision will ultimately ultimately fall to Justin Trudeau's cabinet. The review, though, has been going on for a year, and so far the government has not made a decision one way or the other. Basma Mamani is an analyst on Middle East politics, a senior fellow as well at the Center for International Government's Innovation in Waterloo. She joins me now in studio. Hi, Professor Mamani. Hi. Nice to see you in person here. Thanks very much for doing this. Let me just start off by framing this for our viewers because, of course, after the brutal murder of Jamal Khashoggi, the Canadian government was under a lot of pressure to review this big sale of arms to Saudi Arabia, which has constantly faced scrutiny because it's not like the human rights record of Saudi Arabia hasn't come up before what happened to Jamal Khashoggi. That has basically been under review the whole time. What this document says is there's no reason to believe, they, they, they conclusively say, that, uh, the, that what we are selling to Saudi Arabia is being used to commit human rights abuses. What is the significance of that from your perspective? Well, I mean, I think uh, there's a broader, I think, message here uh, that I think in, in having this posted is perhaps maybe a signal to the Saudis that they want to move on. Uh, I think there's also some very interesting developments writ large. And what we saw, for example, in the Global Mail reporting as well today about uh, our new foreign minister that perhaps also he's a bit softer on China. Maybe this is sort of a chance for the new Liberal government to, in fact, try and turn that page on these very finicky files. But in terms of the essence of what I think the, the, the these new uh, uh, documents show us, I think is something that we've all been thinking of for some time, that the labs probably can't be traced exactly into Yemen. Uh, that certainly, I think, is not where the Saudis have done most of, uh, you know, use most of the labs. It's probably been in the eastern provinces, and there is some link to uh, repression that happened inside their country. But in terms of the ground fighting in Yemen, most of that has been happening by the United Arab Emirates and their militias. It hasn't been happening by the Saudis. So I'm not surprised at that analysis. Uh, the point of the of the article as well, or, or the, the document suggests that most of the bombing has been coming from the sky. And I think it's clear there's redacted parts of that, but indeed much of that equipment has been supplied by the Americans to the Saudis. How sure can a country like Canada be that it's not, that they aren't being used? I understand the, the risk assessment that's done, but is it 100%? Nothing's 100%. And we have been getting some videos. And of yeah. course, some of the that's videos... Ask, yeah. Absolutely. And some of the videos show that they may have been some of the older labs that were delivered, not the most recent ones. Um, there's even some, uh, I think, allegation that there have been some retrofitting of those labs because the labs themselves aren't really the kind of, uh, you know, kind of things that you take into a battle. It's not the kind of equipment that you would use, frankly, for that offensive purposes, but it looks like they may have been altering them, adding on machine guns at the top to re make it somehow more of an assault vehicle, and that may have been used in Yemen. But I think what is more important in terms of the message of this is really about they want to go back to business as usual. And I think it's a broader testament to perhaps where we're going to see Saudi-Canadian relationship go. Do you think that um, that's possible? And I ask because what the government is reviewing is more than just the briefing note. It's not just whether, I mean, my, my guess would be, or, or I guess I'm asking you, should it be more than just whether or not the, the weapons we're selling are directly being used to commit human rights atrocities, but also 
why are we selling to a regime that was culpable in the, you know, found to be independently culpable in the death of Jamal Khashoggi, right? Like, isn't that the broader question that the government is looking at? Absolutely. And I think at the point, at the end of the day, look, Saudi Arabia deserves censure. That's that's not even a, a question. Um, and the aerial bombardment alone is probably killing far more civilians. And that's where really Saudi Arabia is culpable, I think, in the death of so many civilians, without a doubt. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think what we're probably getting in terms of some of the messaging here is, I think, a broader statement about where the relationship is going to go. But if you're going to be in the business of selling arms, Saudi Arabia is the largest purchase of arms in the world. And so are we the, either we're in the business or we're not. And I'm very happy to have a broader public conversation about what's the role of a feminist foreign policy government in selling arms. I mean, they're completely incompatible in so many ways, let's be honest with ourselves. But at the end of the day, if we're talking about the labs, I think that this is probably nothing new in terms of telling us that the labs were not necessarily found in battle in Yemen. It may have been an eastern part of the province or eastern provinces of Saudi Arabia. The one thing I did find interesting in that note, however, was the the, the very uh, very interesting number of 20 companies coming yes. to the government and telling them that there were two billion dollars in lost sales of business contracts. And I think actually that number is underestimated. And that's that's basically this this briefing uh, document quantifies what they say the economic damage since that tweet that went out. I believe it was in August of 2018 mm -hmm. or the summer of 2018 uh, from the foreign affairs minister that uh, started the whole diplomatic rift between the two countries prior to what happened to Jamal Khashoggi. You had, let me just pick up on what you said about uh, Minister Champagne, who takes over the file. Do you think that, that uh, the Liberals will use this as an opportunity to switch direction and the Saudis will be receptive to that? Absolutely. In fact, I mean, I remember very clearly Adel Joubert, who was the foreign minister of Saudi Arabia at the time and, and still contains a very important, uh, retains an important portfolio. You know, it was very clear it was until there's a change in Canadian government or the foreign minister. Remember, they really put it on Christopher Freeland's back as the person who was responsible at the end of the day. And I think this is probably warming, uh, potentially warming the relationship. And I think we might just see a turn in page here. All right, I'll leave it there. Thank you, Professor Mamani. Pleasure Thank to you. have you here. Likewise. That's best Mama Mamani. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.